Hi there, I'm Patrick, the Everyday Martian. This channel is all about Mars colonization. Over the next decade, it's quite conceivable that humans will land on Mars. I'll talk about more about that here. But before we look forward, we should take stock of everything that came before. I thought it would be fun to run through every attempted Mars landing mission to date, both the successful and unsuccessful, all the way up from 1962 to 2021. Now, I'm just focusing on missions that were attempting to land on the surface of Mars. There were missions that were orbiters or flybys or gravity assists. I won't look at them. I'm just focused on the landings. So this could be a long video. So I'll put timestamps and timeline chapters below. So if you want to jump around, you can. All right then, let's begin. The first attempt at landing something on Mars was the 2MV3 number one, which I'm going to say it was an awful name. It was launched by the Soviet Union in 1962 atop a Molnir rocket. Sadly, the rocket failed and the 2MV3 number one never left low Earth orbit. After that failure, it would be nearly a decade before another Mars landing mission was attempted. But in 1971, the Soviet Union tried again. Using the Proton KD rockets, they launched Mars 2 and Mars 3. Better rockets, better names. The Mars 2 was launched on May 19th, and the Mars 3 soon after on May 28th. This is a common theme you'll notice sending multiple rockets within the same Earth-Mars transfer window. Since you can really only launch every two years or so because of the orbits, it makes sense to add some redundancy to your missions. The Mars 2 deployed on November 27th in 1971. Now, it did land somewhere. So it was the first man-made object on Mars, but it did land successfully. Just a few days later though, on December 2nd, Mars 3 successfully landed. However, it landed in the middle of a violent dust storm and contact was lost after only 14.5 seconds. In that time, it managed to send back 79 lines of one image. Here it is, the first image sent back from the surface of Mars. But there are some disagreement on this photo. To the average person, including myself, when I first saw it, it looks like a very grainy photo of the Martian horizon. However, the Mars 3 camera is vertical, not horizontal. So the actual photo looked more like this. The Soviet scientists eventually concluded it contained no real information. So this was the first photo sent from the Martian surface, but perhaps not the first photo of the Martian surface. In 1972, the Prop M rover landed, but we're not sure if it was successfully deployed, as communication was soon lost. Over the next few years, the Soviets would try and try again. In 1973, the Mars 6 captured some atmospheric data, but was lost upon landing. And a few months later, the Mars 7 detached too early and failed to enter the Martian atmosphere. Then in 1975, the US sent out Viking 1 and Viking 2, launching on August 20th and September 9th, respectively. On August 20th, 1975, the first Viking spaceship was launched. Just two weeks later, there was a second Viking launch. Together, they began the search for Martian life. July 20th, 1976, Viking 1 landed successfully and sent back the first undisputed clear image of the Martian surface. Here it is. It would send back many more images just like this. Beautiful panoramas. The Martian surface like you've never seen it before. The world was stunned. A moment in every Viking's life that he or she will never forget, sitting with that television right in front of them and watching as the first lines came down, it came down line by line by line. By the time we could see five or six lines, we could actually start seeing the outline of a rock. And you saw one section, then two sections, and three sections, and you started seeing the surface of Mars, and then you knew we had done it. There's no way to describe it. We were lifted up. It was, everybody kept walking around. This photograph will be in the books a thousand years from now. On September 3rd, 1976, the Viking 2 landed as well. Both were originally designed to last for 90 days, or sols as they're called on Mars. But Viking 1 lasted for 2,245 sols, and Viking 2 lasted for 1,281 sols. The success of NASA's landers was in stark contrast to the USSR's final missions to Mars. Phobos 1 and Phobos 2 launched in 1988 on July 7th and 12th respectively. Both failed. Phobos 1 failed in transit, it didn't even enter Martian orbit, and Phobos II lost communications before landing. With the USSR collapsing in the early 90s, these were the last missions the Soviets would launch. However, in 1996, the newly democratic Russia would attempt a very interesting mission, 
and perhaps been apprehensive about their previous track record, decided not to go with a lander, but with a penetrator. Please, no jokes. The idea being that the forebody would strike the surface and the afterbody would detach and penetrate the Martian surface below up to five to six meters. It would have been an interesting mission, but sadly, the Proton KD-2, the rocket it was on, never left low Earth orbit and it was a failed mission. December 4th, 1996, the Mars Pathfinder, which also housed the first Martian rover, the Sojourner, was launched. They both landed successfully on the 4th of July, 1997. Contact with Pathfinder was lost on September 27th and the Sojourner rover operated for 84 days. Pathfinder might sound familiar because it was recently featured in the film The Martian. It's what Watney uses to re-establish contact with Earth again. In January 1999, NASA launched a Mars Polar Lander. This mission was also carrying a penetrator like the previous Russian mission, which was called Deep Space 2. Sadly, all contact was lost with both the Mars Polar Lander and Deep Space 2 when it was attempting to land. June 2nd, 2003, the UK and the ESA, the European Space Agency, attempted to land for the first time on Mars. The Europeans' first probe was the Beagle 2. Landing on Christmas Day, after they didn't receive communication as expected, they used NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter high-res camera to locate the Beagle 2 landing site and found that it had actually successfully landed, but two of its four sonar panels never fully extended and they were blocking the communications antenna. During the same Mars Earth transfer window, NASA sent two rovers, Spirit and Opportunity. Launching on June 8th and 10th respectively, Landing on January 4th and 25th, 2004. Spirit operated for 2,208 sols. An opportunity operated for a massive 5,111 sols. On June 10th, 2018, Opportunity sent its final message back to Earth. My battery is low and it's getting dark. Opportunity managed to travel 45.16 kilometers or 28.06 miles and outlasted its original operating plan by 14 years and 46 days. To this day, it has traveled the most distance by any Martian or Moon rover. On May 25th, 2008, the NASA Phoenix lander successfully touched down and was in operation until November 2nd, 2008. On November 26, 2011, NASA sent a car-sized Curiosity rover, which successfully landed on August 6, 2012. The Curiosity rover is still in operation to this day. As of July 2020, it has traveled 22.97 kilometers, or 14.27 miles. So about half the distance of opportunity, so someday I might catch up with it. In March 2016, the ESA tried to land on Mars again, the Scaparelli EDM lander, but unfortunately to no avail. They got some atmospheric data back, but nothing beyond that. And finally, on November 26th, 2018, NASA landed InSight Lander, which is still operational today. So, that is all the attempted Mars landing missions so far. But, there are two missions currently in transit that all going well will land on Mars in 2021. The first mission from China attempts to land the Chen-Wen-1 lander and rover. It launched July 23rd, 2020. It aims to land April 23rd, 2021. On July 30th, 2020, NASA launched a Perseverance rover and, very excitingly, the Ingenuity helicopter. These should be landing on February 18th, 2021. So, there you have it. A complete history of landing on Mars, so far. As I said, this channel is all about Mars colonization. So whilst the landers and the rovers and the helicopters are amazing, we want humans on the ground. If that's something you're interested in too, make sure you like and subscribe. It really does help out the channel a lot. And if you have any questions or if I got something wrong, it's quite possible. Then comment below and I'll get back to you. I'm the Everyday Martian. Thanks for watching.